I heard some crying. What are you doing up there? Come here. Come here. Whoa. I don't really want you climbing that roof. What are you doing? So the garden is actually going to be right in this area between this big pine tree all the way over to the far tree line. But we probably won't be expanding it all the way there quite this year. So this was the garden last year. So it's about, I believe it was 30 feet by 50 feet. And you can see where all the fencing is. Some spinach. Still barely hanging in there. <laughs> we do have some pak choy hiding under the snow. I'm not sure if we'll be able to use it at this point. If anybody else knows how pak choy does after being covered in snow, let me know because I would love to know if we can actually eat it. And here we have some uh, mescla mix. I'm gonna try it and see how it is. Hey, that's still pretty good. Hmm. So then over here we have three raised beds. Um, this is where we grew a lot of our greens. Um, you can see them, <laughs> the remnants of them. I'm surprised the kale died. I was expecting it to hang on a little longer, but it did not. Kitties have become more adventurous. Hi guys. Apparently they're enjoying hanging out in the, in the goat run. Hi kitty. What are you doing? What are you doing? Chris made them a little shell so they can drink out of the water. He's so cute. Okay, there they go. It's their little ski route. Hi guys! What's up, Basil and Sage? How cute is that little thing? So he made them the buckets so they could stand on it. And then he added the little shells so they wouldn't fall in the water when they drink. Hey Noelle. This little girl is about to turn one. Hey friends, so today I'm going to record a little video about my seed collection, which right now is like a total mess. Um, I'll show you kind of the state of things. 
and also talk a little bit about the garden plans. So this is my seed collection. Um, I just got a bunch of new seeds for this upcoming spring. So when it comes to seeds, um, I have seeds left over from when I started last year. I have seeds that I saved, um, seeds that I bought throughout the season last year um, that I didn't end up getting to use or I only used a little bit of. And then I bought a lot of seeds because it's an addiction, um, a good addiction, but it can actually add up, it gets expensive. So every YouTube video I watched, and I would say it was predominantly through MI Gardener and Roots and Refuge on their YouTube channels, every time they talked about something that they loved growing, I would write it down and keep a list. So I wrote down a list of tomatoes, peppers, um, different types of squashes, beans, you know, you name it, anything pretty much. And I would research that, that crop and see if it was something that I think I would like, and then I would add it to my list of things to buy. So I bought a lot of that through Baker Creek Seeds, um, Fruition Seeds, which is a seed company here in New York, an organic seed company, and also through um, MI Gardener. Um, and so I'll share a little bit about what I bought with you today. So, but the first thing I want to share is seeds I saved. So the first seed, and these might be cross-pollinated, they're probably cross-pollinated, but I wanted to try it. So the first thing I saved was buttercup squash seeds. Hi. Are you going to interrupt my video? You're so sweet. So sweet. Um, and then I also saved some miniature pumpkin seeds. And these were all organic heirloom seeds, so I was able to save them. And then some butternut squash seeds. Uh, let's see what else. Honestly, this is pretty sad because I didn't label this, so I have no idea what this is. Mystery. I know it's tomatoes. I can tell it's tomato seeds, but I did not label. And that is a lesson. Do not do, not do that. Label your seeds so you know what you're growing. Hi, Tim. Yeah, you can. He's so cute. Resolved. Figured out why these seeds weren't labeled. This is what happens when you have a puppy, an eight month old lab puppy. Um, well, he's a year now, but at the time he was younger. He loves to eat paper and he ate the seed packet. So these seeds are the remnants of what he didn't eat, um, and there were sun golds, like a, a vibrant mix of sun golds, different colors. That's what that is. So I saved some of their green zebra tomato seeds from a tomato I took home with me. Um, I love the green zebra. And I also saved some um, of our copia tomatoes, like a slicer tomato. That was really, really cool looking. It was like a light yellow, golden color. I think I got it, I bought it from a local farm, so I don't know where they got their seeds from. But I saved some of those. Okay, what else did I save? I saved glacier tomatoes. It's like a little saladette tomato. Um, it was just really a good size for like, I don't have time to make a salad for work, so I'm just gonna add all the ingredients into my lunchbox and slice up a tomato at work. Um, really beautiful and very productive. It was the, one of the earliest tomatoes we got, so it was fun to see those coming. Oh, these were um, from butter lettuce, an organic crop. So I saved. This is the only lettuce seeds I saved this year. Oh, these were again another chewed up, chewed another chewed up seed packet. Um, snap peas. I planted a few of them, and then my dog got into them. Of course, because they're peas and they're delicious. Um, my dog got into them, so I saved what I could and have it in this little baggie. What else do I have from last year? Okay, another company that I buy from um, fairly, somewhat regularly, is High Mowing Organic Seeds. Um, they're located out of Vermont. Um, they're really popular for people who grow in Maine and Vermont and on the East Coast. Um, but our climate is fairly similar. Um, so it's nice when they're regionally, regionally adapted like, like this. And my favorite regionally adapted company 
is Fruition Seeds. Um, the owner is so knowledgeable. Um, she's on YouTube. You can find her on YouTube. And the seeds um, are really great. They have a really great germination rate. Um, and her farm is just beautiful. She ha opens it up to visitors and you can just see all the things she has growing. And she tries some really unique varieties like um, a northern peanut, which I haven't ordered yet, but I will order. Things like that. This is what I started with and this at one point fit all my seeds. No, it clearly doesn't. Uh, but I have a bunch in here organized. Let's see what I got. So I have a bunch of beet seeds from this company called Botanical Interests. So I like it because they have um, organic varieties. Um, so I like this company too. I've been happy with their seeds. Although I had a really hard time germinating beets this year. I um, planted some starts. Then I started indoors. And I'm, transplanting beets is kind of strange, but um, I did do it. And I had success with those. And I had beets probably like June. Um, and then I couldn't start them. Like even in late summer, it, they wouldn't grow. And what would happen is they would get to be like this big or they would just come up and then they would just get burnt and die. So, any suggestions for, for uh, doing beets in the ground? Maybe it was just the soil, the raised bed soil was pretty poor, so I'm gonna try it again in, in ground beds this year. Um, Cause they don't do well transplanted, so you really wanna plant them in the ground, but I had a lot of issues doing that, so. And I love beets, I love beets, especially, uh, I really like juicing beets, so. Any suggestions? Would love to hear them. Um, I used, used Johnny's seeds for all my seeds last year, but I, I probably won't buy a lot from them again. I was very happy with them, but it, it's hard to find heirloom seeds. Really good carrots. Love dragon carrots. Actually, I can show you because I still have them in the fridge. They've lasted all this time. Here. Sit here for a second, okay? They're so cool. They're kind of small, but I was happy with them. So they've stayed. They've kept so well. I found like the perfect drawer to put them in in the fridge, and they're like totally solid. But they're super cool on the inside. Oops. Look, an orange on the inside. So cool. I'm really sweet. These ones were har harvested after it was starting to get cold, so they're really sweet. And I also have some radishes too. Kind of like avoiding using the last of my remaining goods because it makes me sad that I'm going to have to wait until next spring. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what I'm planning to grow. Some of the things I'm planning to grow. <laughs> um, this is not organized, I should organize. seeds from Baker Creek's, Baker Creek Seeds. Um, and I had never heard about this company before, but they like blew up, probably because a lot of other YouTubers use them. Maybe they've always been really, really, really big, but I'd never heard of them before, so I was excited to find an heirloom company. So, different kinds of beets, carrots. Um, I really like a variety of colors, as you can probably see. So yellow, purple, orange and sizes. I, I like di diversity, so I don't want to ever have a farm that's just a lot of one thing. I find that like to be a little boring, and I'm it's like a fun adventure for me, gardening. And then all these different kinds of peppers. A lot of these um, were through suggestions from other people on YouTube. Ooh, and I love hot sauce, so hot peppers, um, different kinds. Banana peppers, we, we just love peppers. Bono peppers, the Aros Compoyo peppers that were suggested by Roots and Refuge. 
and they just looked like really productive plants. And then um, Chinese fat color, paprika, like I said. I want to grow some black beans. I want to try see how much we can produce because we love beans. Being um, mostly vegan, we don't really we don't eat meat, so beans are a great source of protein and substance. Um, some, some cool corn that just looked fun. I love colorful corn. Like this was um, glass gem and it's already popping. Well, it's been popping for a while, but it's just so beautiful. Um, a couple different flowers. Amaranth, I'm going to try to grow for the grain. And then calendula, which I haven't grown before, surprisingly. It's a very popular one. Fruits or fruity related things. So I have um, in this bag is ground cherry, which I became obsessed with. I tried it at the farm um, that I was um, helping with and just would, loved it. And then goji berries, which I'm really excited to try growing here. Also just some different types of tomatoes. I did save some tomato seeds, so I do have some. And I'm not sure what I like yet. Tomatoes are just now growing on me, which is a little surprising, but um, some different types of onions. I'm really excited to start onions. Squash are one of my favorite things. I love eating squash. So um, a couple different kinds. Sugar pie pumpkins. This one just looked fun. And zucchini. I want to do some more zoodles. And this one was just cool. It was like a round little summer squash. I thought it would be spring some variety in the early summer when the winter squash aren't ready yet. And then I also bought some seeds from my gardener, like I said. So green glow green globe artichoke which can be grown um, annually here so Tabasco pepper I saw how productive it was for other youtubers specifically um, living traditions homestead and roots and refuge and they look like little Christmas tree plants so and we love hot peppers here so I thought they'd be a great thing to plant and add a lot of vibrancy to the garden some different types of tomatoes um, pear tomatoes these I'm hoping will make a great um, paste tomatoes, so I got two bags, two packs, opaca, um, some pepper, some more peppers, different types of bell peppers, cayenne, I wanted to try okra, we've never had, I've never had okra, um, moon and stars watermelon, which I'm excited about, garbanzo beans, um, some different types of basil. So I didn't start any of my herbs from seed last year, so I wanted to have a set of herb seeds, so I ordered some from M.I. Gardener because he has, because um, M.I. Gardener has great prices. It's like a dollar per seed pack, which is just like amazing. So catnip, chamomile, rosemary. Um, a goal of mine is to have a perennial herb garden uh, right out behind our door, so that when I'm cooking meals and I forget I wanted to add a certain herb until last minute, which is like every night. Um, I can go quickly grab it and then sprinkle it on whatever I'm making. So maybe we'll do some raised boxes right outside the door that will look really nice and be really useful. Oregano, thyme, sage, parsley, like I said, just a lot of herbs, dill, chives, um, oh and then noodle beans because I had heard so many great things about these so I was just excited and I had forgotten to order them. Um, holy basil and Thai basil. my followers on Instagram to ask me questions that they wanted me to answer in this video. So I have their questions here and Taylor with Lost and Farmed asked me some really great questions and I just wanted to answer her questions real quick. The first thing she asked me was, what have you grown that is the most shocking? Um, that's a great question. And I thought about this earlier and I couldn't think of an answer and now I still can't think of an answer. I would say, so shocking or surprising, well Brussels sprouts were really shocking. I had no idea how they grew before I grew them and it was so fun to watch them grow. I love them. They, you just start them really early and you don't get them till really late so it's a huge long season of growing and you don't get the result until the very end. It's, that, was, that was really fun and um, rewarding. And then the other thing that was really surprising was buttercup squash. Um, I actually have one still that I can show you. So this is a buttercup squash. Um, they're like a great size for like a meal for two, but they're like very buttery in flavor and almost like a potato mixed with the like butternut squash. So it's kind of half potato, half butternut squash, but it's not thready like 
like a butter butter nut. So I really like the buttercup and they were really prolific. So I did save seeds um, from them and I'm ex really excited to grow them again. I was just, I had never had it before and it's not something you can e easily access if you're not growing it. So that was very surprising and I would totally recommend growing those. Um, I also love butter, butternut squash, but they weren't as productive this year. The other question was, what are you planting this year that's totally new? So, let's see, I didn't plant, I didn't plant a lot of things this year. I didn't do any summer squashes, so I'm, I'm going to do those. Um, I didn't do garlic and I didn't do onions, and those are the two biggest things that I'm really excited about. Because garlic you have to start in the fall, um, or you, sh you should start in the fall. I've seen people say you could do it in the spring, like really early, but, um, so I did that in the fall and I'm, I'm really pumped for that. And with onions, you have to start them like earlier than anything else if you're doing seeds. So that was another one where um, I'm trying that this year. And then lots of things like I, I only did like one type of pepper this year and I only really did like a few types of tomatoes and so a lot of things I, ha I didn't do last year that I'm doing this year. And then top three to five must grows. That's a great question. I would say, well, I really love growing radishes because it's like an immediate <laughs> outcome. You know, you plant it and then a couple weeks later they're pretty much ready to go. And so if, you, if you're wanting like more immediate satisfaction or to kind of test your skills as a gardener, I would say radishes are a really good one to start, start with or to grow. So radishes, carrots are really fun because they take a long time, but then when you finally get it, it's really rewarding. Brussels sprouts, for sure. Love Brussels sprouts. One that you might not be familiar with that I would definitely try growing is called Honey Nut Squash. It's got very miniature butternut, and it has the most amazing flavor. It's like all the flavor of butternut like packed into this tiny little fruit, and it's like extra rich, extra buttery, extra flavorful. And um, it was developed here in upstate New York. Oh, fifth must grow. One of my favorite things was glass gem corn. Um, it's just gorgeous, really colorful, so fun when you finally get it and you can open up the, the, the husk and you can see that vibrant color. It was one of, one of the best days out in the garden. And, and then the last question she asked was, where do you get your seeds from? And last year I got them from Johnny Seeds and then I bought them from Fruition Seeds um, and then High Mowing. This year, I'm trying some new new as well as using some old, so I would say my go-to's this year will be Fruition Seeds, Baker Creek Seeds, and MI Gardener, and then also I'll, I'm sure I'll get, I'll get some more from High Mowing because I really like them. So thanks for watching this long-winded, um, slightly unorganized video. I'm glad that you wanted to join me to learn about the seeds that I have and then the plans for the garden in 2019. Please um, like and comment and share if you can, if you think there's people who would be interested in our channel. And if you can comment below and let me know if you have any questions or um, ideas that you have for your garden that you want to share, um, share with me. I'd love to hear about them. So that's all for now, friends. Thanks so much for joining me, and I look forward to sharing my next video with you.